but uh, as we agreed, we don't have time now for a specific Q&A, but uh, we will have in three minutes, because uh, now we ask to come on the stage before lunch for the last 20 minutes to have a Q&A, because other years you said, OK, we want to ask something to the, to the, Q and to the keynote speakers. We don't have time. This is going very fast. And this year, we decided to stay here and to stay for a little bit more and think about few questions, and we can question uh, our interviewees. So I will talk briefly about Altair in between, which is we have a, a special event each month, which is called Meeting Point. And in this event in Altair, we launched this event last June, for June 2015, and we had uh, got uh, 10 meetings, which are very interesting. And we can see the video. We have a video there about the, we have made a, a summary of the last year experience in, in Meeting Point. And let's see if we can see this video. It's one minute video. And basically, in between, we can just ask for our keynote speakers to hear. Basically, Altair is hosting our monthly uh, gathering. It's called Meeting Point. We have invited, for example, Alex Badia from uh, Barret Films, uh, Miquel de Uwe Plana from Alma, for example, a lot of people, and we have more time to reflect and to talk about interactive documentary, because during the Interdocs Barcelona, normally, we don't have time. It's very, there's a rush, and we have to go very, very quick. So this is more or less the, the, the time that we have, you can see here, more or less, in this video, the starting in last June of uh, the meeting point, basically, and we have several uh, guest speakers. You can see here a, a, a resume of that encounters that meet people in the second floor of Altair bookstore. We talk about RV, for, uh, BR, sorry, with Daniel Gonzalez, with a project called The Machine to Be Another, for example. We had another projects there. We have BR Showcase, Pere Ortin, he's the director of Altair Magazine. We had Showcase with uh, Cardboard from Google, for example. We have Oculus Rift, people can try. And well, basically this is the idea. It's more, we talk with about legal rights on in, in interactive documentary with Alejandro Turiño from Madrid, from Ecija, a well-known company. And well, basically I did some kind of, uh, I talk about web docs in the wall. We have little presentations about Invisibles, for example, from Xavier Satorra, uh, case study presentations of projects, for example. And more or less, this is our proposal. If you are interested, you can join us, more or less one time each month. And we are, let's say, 20, 30 people. It's very intim, it's in intimacy. The, and basically, this was our uh, pre-last uh, gathering about Alma, and it was very nice, the, the Q&A and the discussion between Mikel de Overplana and Isabel Fuguer. So, this is our proposal of Meeting Point, and thanks to Altair for letting us to stay in their space, and especially the networking that arose from that encounter that you can see afterwards. There's beers, and beers is very good for making networking, as you probably know. And I ask to the old keynotes, please, come on the stage, please, and a big round of applause for Liz, Anita, Emily, Brenda, David, and Mike. You can just have a seat for the last minutes of, the, of this tight morning. And as I said before, uh, I promise Carla Sora from Universitat Pumpo Fabra, he will be the first one to, to ask. And if you have a question as well for offshore, it's, it's better. If, if you have two questions, it's better. You have one, I know, but you can question to offshore as well, because the idea is that you can question now, uh, especially to offshore, and then open to other. Let's give the mic to Carlos, and then we start the final Q&A. Let's say 20 extra minutes only for you, or if you don't want to ask, I will ask. Carlos. Uh, Mike? It's working. Ah, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Arnaud. You are so kind. Uh, salut, Emily. Merci pour ton présentation. Uh, I would like to ask you about, about how you evaluate your projects, because uh, uh, I think that you probably focus on the yep. statistics in, in Google you. Analytics, etc., the time average uh, spending of the users, etc. But you said on your presentation that you are all, all also focusing on the participation of the people, of the audience, and all also the the networks the social networks etc what they say about your projects etc etc and probably uh, the impact in the in the media of your projects too so i think that it could be interesting to show to share with us uh, if you have some kind of uh, 
guidelines of how to evaluate your projects. I mean, the success of, of your projects. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, first, I have to say that we don't use Google Analytics anymore <laughs> because after uh, making Do Not Track, uh, we made the political decision to stop using Google Analytics. So uh, we use uh, something uh, different, not that easy to follow. But um, The impact uh, is the keyword, actually. This is the... the uh, what we are focusing on and uh, so it's not only a quantitative uh, measurement but also uh, that would be a qualitative measurement but oh you're becoming you're in the dark now uh, and uh, thank you and um, so it's it's difficult to measure that would be for instance uh, uh, for projects to be uh, featured in uh, in some projection uh, from an association about uh, um, okay sorry I have an example in mind but it's too complicated to explain in, in English it's like uh, an, associ an association for instance uh, who works for the human rights uh, basically in Paris they used uh, one of our programs to uh, show it to a conference that would be um, uh, like what is uh, okay I'm not clear I'm looking for my words in English and uh, I'm, I'm bad at it I'm sorry um, I don't have any examples for Arte, but that would be being featured uh, in, uh, for instance, educational programs or uh, ha having been quoted into uh, some, uh, yes, meetings of associations when it's about documentaries with social issues, for instance. Uh, but I'm not clear also because everybody is looking actually for uh, what would be the metrics to measure impact. Uh, because uh, how can we tell that uh, a program uh, further than the figures has a, a real uh, echo in the, the society? That's everybody's looking for the magical uh, formula that will help us to measure it uh, in a more concrete way, objective way. And I guess it depends on your, your goals as well, doesn't it? It's like what you mentioned as one of your manifestos. And there are different companies that have different ways of measuring impact. But there are loads of different... People like the Harmony Institute in, um, in New York, um, they've worked a lot with documentary and have started to work with interactive work as well. Um, so they're sort of trying to see what the value... I suppose it, it depends what your values are and your goals are for a project of how you measure the impact. I don't know, don't you... Thing. But there, there are some interesting tools and companies who are measuring impact in different ways. Well, because I, I answer for the documentary part, but uh, uh, of course that would be different in the, the, with a the video game or in the fiction area. Uh, David, you wanted to... No? Oh. Um, <laughs> Sometimes when, uh, when you start a project, uh, you think about this first how we can uh, get the measure, the, the metric to, to, to see. So for example, in Orge, uh, one of the metrics is how many uh, people uh, share uh, cards, uh, what kind of cards they share, uh, when, how they do. Uh, and it's very interesting because uh, we, we, we make, uh, for example, we, we build an um, inside forum and uh, you know it's a very old-fashioned way to, to be web, and it's a huge forum right now. A lot of people share their cards inside the forum uh, instead of Facebook or Twitter. That was the first idea. So um, I think um, it's it's uh, the best way to, to to get the impact is to think about it during the scripting, during the editing, during the development. It's inside the project, you know. It's not. An, it's not only um, a strategy about uh, um, the broadcasting or something like that. It's very okay. How the people get involved into your program, so that's very important. And uh, for example, uh, National Film Board um, in Canada. 
they know that very well. Uh, when, when you start a project with them, uh, you get one department, uh, one year or maybe sometime two years before you, you launch, they are uh, looking for uh, what kind of impact we can uh, um, hope and try to, to get. For example, sorry, it's uh, another project I work on, uh, Format Money. Uh, I remember they were very uh, nervous uh, because it was a game, a game documentary. So they say if we don't have any players, there is nothing. No game and no documentary. So during one year before the launching, we were uh, looking for uh, players through partners in media and something like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's, a, new, uh, it's a new way for everybody, for broadcaster, producer, creators, and so on. I would just add one last thing to your examples uh, about Orjeu, uh, which is the documentary about soccer game. Uh, in France, it has, it has had a big uh, echo uh, during the first day because inside the documentary, there is one player who is very famous in France. It's Emmanuel Petit. He was in the, in the winning team uh, in uh, 1998. Uh, and he, he exposes his point of view that can be shocking for some. Uh, and since he's very famous and very uh, mediatic, uh, a lot of newspapers talked about it, uh, showed uh, the little extracts. So it was good for uh, the documentary in some way, but that was not exactly the, the thing we wanted to show because that was Emmanuel Petit and the, the shocking aspect that was uh, put into the lights, but we wanted that, so that was a communication impact because uh, our video was spreading. That was good for figures. That, that was good in the end. That was good for the program, of course. But that was not exactly the impact we wanted for our jeu, which is not a uh, um, documentary about Emmanuel Petit and shocking things. But it's a documentary a bit more rich and complex than that. Uh, any question for uh, Offshore, which was the last presentation, and okay, we gave him, of course, the possibility to ask questions, and if done, I have a question as well. But here we have uh, Isabel Fernandez from Alpatis. Wait for the micro, because if done, uh, for Offshore. It's a very simple question. It's just I, I like to know the, the budget for this project. <laughs> Tricky question. Uh, it was... Uh, Three millions. No, it was 250,000 Canadian. So that was what I got from the grant. And half of it went to web design. Right now, it's the, I think the, budget, uh, the conversion rate to euro is 1.42 cents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, $1.42. One $1. But, but this actually, uh, speaking to that, when I, was, I, I didn't, I kind of took a tangent at the beginning, but sort of like this convergence or this uh, kind of uh, synergy of like of, of all the elements going to a project. In this, this case, I think also is like where the money's come from is an important part too. Now for us actually to actually have this as, as like a, a research, research grant from uh, digital humanities and, and post-secondary education and this whole idea of taking research and the end product the deliverable is actually something that that is for the whole world to enjoy, not something that's stacked into like a hundred and page, hundred page uh, report or, or or a paper that nobody's going to read. So, that's, uh, mm -hmm. cool. and why why you took the decision, Brenda, and afterwards with Mike to do this uh, documentary, the web doc in 3D? I mean, after the experience of One Millionth Tower, for example, you decided to make some kind of very difficult using WebGL, 3GS, etc., in three dimensions. Why this decision at that point? What was HTML? Uh, I think what we wanted to do, you know, as I, I sort of alluded to it in the talk, was that we wanted to create an immersive experience. Mm -hmm and that we felt that people knew very little about what the actual production environment was of an oil rig. And as we were not gonna get onto an actual oil rig, um, the, the option was to create one and to create a 3D one that would have 3D sound and that would allow a user to navigate her way through the various 
cracks and crannies and, and be immersed in the kind of loud, cacophonous environment of, a, of an invented oil rig. And we never thought that we were, I mean, the prototypes we showed you are not realistic. Um, oil rigs are like going to Mars. They're hugely, uh, they're incredible technological accomplishments. Um, most of the time they are um, engineered in a way that's quite extraordinary and as everyone kept telling us, as complicated as sending a man to Mars. It's always a man to Mars, never a woman. Um, but we wanted to create something that looked more like a story world that you might encounter in a game. So things are, um, look a little bit shoddy. When you get down to the control room, you actually see that things are falling apart, windows are broken, computers are smashed. Etc. So it was never the intention to replicate what a real oil rig looked like, but rather to create a, a story world that would allow you to feel that this interface and these rooms all have very particular kind of stories to tell. Yeah, it's sort of our our take on magic realism, you know, uh, magic unrealism, I guess. And uh, <laughs> uh, but it's also, I, I think, too, and we were talking too about impact and 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 the role of impact on, and I think. I, we sort of talk about the audience impact, but I think before you get to the audience impact, there's a whole echoing uh, chamber of, of impacts. And I think one of the biggest impacts that you have in a project is, is how are the creators impacted by, uh, uh, by themselves and, and, and as they, they kind of figure stuff out. I mean, it, it, literally a project like this starts, or a project like this starts with like a bunch of paper. And, and, and coffee and, and time and, and, and blood, sweat and tears. But at a certain point, something, something uh, has impact and, and resonates with, with us. And, and uh, so this, this whole idea of like this first person view through, uh, through this world was something that you know, we collectively, uh, we, it, it impacted us. <laughs> Okay, sorry, Mike, but I had to attend yeah. some urgency. No worries. Uh, more questions. Uh, we have two of them. Uh, we have Lucia, and then we have Gemma as well. Hi. Um, I don't know if this is a question or it's more something I throw to good. for debate or further reflection, maybe. But I was wondering your opinion around, because we've been talking about audience like from different projects and points of view, and uh, it's a topic that we usually talk about in these events, how to engage more with the audience and how to develop strategies around that. Um, I don't know, Emily said some numbers about Do Not Track, which has definitely been one of the most successful projects probably last year, which I think you said about 6.2 minutes of usability in over, um, uh, I don't know how many visits you said, but it was like quite a lot. Um, and then David talked about space versus time and, and how that is the, how we engage the audience. And Liz was saying how to personalize content in order to, to, make, the, the, to make it more um, yeah, attractive for the audience and that. How do you think we are adapting and, and, and also talking about impact that Carlos, uh, Carlos was asking, how do we adapt the strategy when, when script writing and all that, knowing the feedback that audience is giving us in terms of how much time they spend in our projects when offshore is like such a huge and rich and, and beautiful project, but knowing that maybe someone is just gonna spend a few minutes there, like I always have this, this like, <gasps> you know? How, how do we measure that, and how do you think, from the creation point of view, uh, we adapt into to that reading uh, method? Well, I, I think one of the things that we considered in offshore was exactly that: that that somebody will, will come, uh, come and 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 leave quickly. Um, I mean, I think that that's the guiding principle of the internet and the experience is that it's sort of based on twitch responses a lot more than, you come to a theater, you, you, it's, it's an effort to go there, and, and you are actually quite often shamed to sitting longer <laughs> in a theater than you would otherwise, oh, because everybody's gonna see me get up and leave, it's a hassle, so you'll end up watching something uh, from beginning to end um, in a theater, and, and the internet is all about uh, 
uh, you will see something for you know two and a half minutes, and then something mysteriously happens, and you're 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 looking at your Facebook, and uh, this <laughs> this is something uh, we've grappled with, and and t to us, I think this is also part of what nonlinearity to me actually the meaning of nonlinearity is is about is not so much taking a story and chopping it all up and putting it into different orders. It's actually about being able to take a slice of a story at any point in time and actually get a sense of what the whole thing's about. So that if, if somebody comes and, and experiences like 30 seconds of offshore and says, wow, this is really cool, but oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tweeting now. Um, that is still for us, it's, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not an artistic or an audience fail. Uh, that that we don't need you know we don't need somebody to spend uh, 40 minutes and it'd be great but it's also something if if you come in and I think that should be the same thing with any interactive experience that is 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 on this platform is you can control the entry point into the experience but you can't control the exit and so to to, to build to build that into the experience. So that, that there is, you know, if, 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 you have a, if you have a narrative arc, and I think things kind of do, should have, stories do have a narrative arc, mm -hmm. that if it still is something that it can happen in, in two minutes, and if they leave, you know, and, and they haven't seen the big finale, uh, your, your message is still intact and complete. That makes sense. Yeah, my worry was more about how we always think of how to engage more the audience, and <laughs> you, were, you were late. <laughs> What's you, that? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Uh, you were running late, David, and yeah, you know it. Very late. <laughs> but, 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 but my answer is, is that not to worry, not, not, to, not to try and make them stay later, or longer. That to, 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 actually, to, actually work, to actually work with that, uh, that part of the platform. Like I think the minute that you, you we start worrying about oh let's let's you know let's make sure they stay here for ten minutes instead of five minutes, I think that that, that trickles down to the uh, instinctively to the audience and and, and uh, they will react. Like I think if 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 you work with that that paradigm that that the internet is based on Twitch response, uh, I, I think you can you can make your engagement your audience engagement will be, I think ultimately more fruitful and less frustrating. I think we also found that people go back, that they may spend five minutes or 10 minutes, but then it's bookmarked and later on they'll go back to it. And I, I mean, that was a hard thing to give up as a linear filmmaker, but it's also, I think it is about the, the, the kind of different formulation of a database approach to documentary that you can go back, you can keep, even if you never go to all of the clips or you never, go on everything and data, data, et cetera, you know it's there in some ways and it can be accessed later. So there is a kind of a different temporality about how we're using them. Um, but yes, it is sometimes feels tragic that you've spent a long time on these things and you don't get eyeballs for an hour. Um, and your question also is about creative process, about how that adapts. And you mentioned script. I mean, it's a kind of funny thing because we're now creating all these different types of experiences that script isn't kind of so relevant. You know, the traditional idea of script. And we almost don't have kind of templated tools that can deal with these things, I think. I mean, that's, you know, it's like how do you write a virtual reality um, narrative at the moment? It's really difficult to think in terms of 3D. And personally, I felt that cinema, sometimes a script was exactly the wrong way to describe something that is a multimedia experience as well. And I always felt that, you know, words on a page were a really bad way of describing cinema. So now we're in an interactive environment. It's kind of like more complex. So I guess it's this idea that I was mentioning in my talk and something that came out in your talk, this idea of um, how you grow an idea and how you have to prototype and work in a very different way and try things out. I mean, in your, like you said you, meant, you mentioned paper, you know, it starts with paper. Try it out, you have to try things out with people and find out how you build that experience because, um, and I don't think there's one way at the moment that we can talk about any of these projects. They're all different shape and feel, they're all different experiences, but it is, you know, you can't do this complete sort of like plan um, of action, and I think that's what happened. I saw at Power to the Pixel, we had these very complex projects that had these huge master plans of transmedia projects, and in fact, none of those projects ever worked. They always started small, 
with this idea of a core idea, which you came back to as well, is keep constant with your core idea. What drove you? You know, what are your goals for that project? Why are you making it in the first place before you get wound up in this idea of format? And I saw when I was working in independent film, the same thing happened. You get wound up in this idea of a 90 minutes feature in the script and you completely lose you know, the whole point of why you do it in the first place as you're developing it and you're trying to sell it to finances and you're making changes and script revisions. And it's the same, the thing is with interactive projects, you're almost forced into this position of prototyping because you're working in a, you're creating an experience, you kind of, that is to do with how people react to it. So you have to keep on going back to it, but keep that idea of the core, what you want to communicate and what's at the heart of the project. I think there, creatively. Maybe I just wanted to add something about impact. I mean, uh, I don't think it's just a nice to have. It's a must to that we have impact. I don't believe in marketing in the classical sense. But uh, I don't know if it's really true that the medium age of Arte television is now 60 years. I think it's higher. Uh, for example, for Swiss television, it's 64 now. It, it means it's the medium. Uh, it means that... There must be older people and many much, many people older than 50 to watch it. It means in 10 years it will be 71, or maybe faster than this. So I think if we want to have um, information or uh, films that tell us more than just one and a half minute on YouTube or one and a half minute on Facebook, I think uh, it's also about thinking how we can reach the people to stay longer and how we can make the forms. It's not a, um, nice to have anymore. I think it's a must, uh, especially for public services. Because if there is no audience anymore, if they are all older than 70, why should uh, the parliament still give money to public service? Maybe there will be new techniques, like research money coming to this. But uh, I believe if we still want to have this, it's uh, for all of us a quest. I believe also that traditional press, like written press, could maybe, uh, I don't know, that we invent new figures, how we can engage and talk about it. How, because it's still in a, in a niche, I believe. And to go out of this niche, that somebody out in the cafe would talk about what we are doing, and not just um, we the makers. And one thing about Orge, um, what, what is the deal? The deal is the collection. And right now, I can tell you that 30% of the people who came, come back. That's a huge number. So there is 300,000 uh, 300, uh, session people, and on this, 30% uh, uh, of the people come back. Because we, we know how people use uh, internet. So as a creation uh, part, you have, to, you, you have to deal with it. We know that there is some people who spend um, days on format money. I know the numbers of Journal du Nassomnie, for example. It's a project from uh, NFB. Uh, not so many people came to, to watch this, but the people who came, do you know the medium uh, hour uh, minute? Two hours. Yes, so it depends on the project. It depends on your, um, when you say the, uh, the very beginning, uh, for, for, for who you, say you, you make this. So our chance is there is no uh, metrics for every uh, project. It's not the same. And each time we have to uh, deal with the uh, new habits, the new us usage of internet and everything. And you can, um, be creative with that, I think. It's not a menace for me. It could be a change. Last minute. Yes. Uh, uh, we, need, we need to lunch. We need to feed ourselves. This is important more than talk. I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's important because we can talk, keep on talking till three, but we have one hour and 15 minutes to talk. And just to say that we have two hours in the, in the afternoon, more, more relaxed. And we have, for example, Fernando Rigaray from Rosario, from Argentina, who will show us amazing transmedia documentaries on social basis, on social journalism, and other BR presentations, very quick, 20 minutes, BR presentations on Spanish and Latin American cases. 
It's late. Uh, some of you are downstairs lunch and you have here and thank you very much for keeping here. And to all of you, thank you very much for coming to Barcelona and for enlightening with our, your knowledge. Thank you very much. See you at three, at three okay? At three here. Thanks.